Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the DJI Mavic 3 review series. I finally got mine in. Takes a little bit longer for me to get these into Hawaii just because the shipping takes a bit longer, but I dropped the coin for this. This is not cheap. This is a $3,000 Flymore combo drone so really i mean we're going to test how this thing is this is going to be the first video unboxing setup inspection see how it is updating you know see how the interface has changed inspect the things really in depth on the drone and all the peripherals you get in the box fly more combo we got all these peripherals first video in the series let's get started with the dji mavic 3. Okay, so I haven't even unboxed this thing yet. It still even has the plastic coating on it. Keep in mind that we're gonna be doing all those um, in-depth flight tests and everything, range tests and all that stuff. So you really can experience it from a first-hand user that has been doing this for a while. And also, you know, I like to just show you how difficult or easy the functions are to actually use on these things. I mean, if they make some changes, you're seeing if it's user friendly or not through my videos because I don't hold anything back. I just kind of show how the thing works in real life. You know what I mean? So got that plastic off Then they have these little tabs on the tape, just pulling the box open for the first time. And uh, wow, really cool looking case. Now remember, I've done all of the Mavic uh ones the mavic twos you know this is coming from somebody that's been through them all probably be easiest to just rip it open with these holes they have here i'm just gonna do that let's just go ahead and rip this open pull this out now this ain't no small bag like the uh the mavic mini and the mavic air bags this is a very large not very large but a much larger bag i gotta say this feels like it's going to be super durable it's almost like a canvas and then the bottom portion is like a canvas dipped in rubber or plastic so they're really going for durability on this bag we got pockets here it's got that kind of dipped canvas on the outside of the pockets so one there one there and then kind of a little zipper pocket on the back. Let's go ahead and open this up. That's something where you could put like your manuals and stuff. And then we've got this kind of side back pocket. And this, gosh, that kind of accesses even a different pocket than this one. Hmm. Yeah. So this isn't connecting inside. So this is an outer pocket, the whole outer side here. And this is kind of an inner side pocket, which encompasses check it out your strap wow look at this so it's actually i didn't even realize this it's actually a backpack and bag in one you have your regular little small bag then you have your side bag where you can just use the strap as a regular side bag and then you can turn it into a backpack clip straps here so those unclip these are metal clips and uh it's a little bit different it's like almost like a le real leather right here on the actual straps that hold the clips together so premium quality stuff and this is how the bag opens up once you get those clips off you just lift this up and this whole top piece has a really large pocket look at this thing okay so that's backpack mode you see how i open that up and then we have access to all the straps basically take these straps out and then once you have these straps out they're going to clip down to these little guys here you see these little loops here so these clips are going to clip to these loops and then you're going to have a whole backpack that's pretty cool man really ingenious idea and again this kind of like not denim but actual canvas material. So man, this this looks like it's gonna last a very long time. A little DJI insignia uh, leather thing here. You've got one more zipper on the very top in backpack mode. And look at this, this zipper opens up, you know, you got a whole huge pocket in here. You can store like say your raincoat. And this is what I was saying, it's kind of like that suede material. 
in there. And then this is the canvas on the outside. Really well stitched. Man, they, they went like the extra mile. And I'm glad they did because this is not a cheap drone. So really a lot of space in here, really well done. I mean, I know I'm talking a lot about the bag, but this thing should be talked about because it's a phenomenal uh, bag here. So I'm gonna zip that up. This just looks like the perfect place for like a little uh, raincoat or something when you're backpacking around. So spinning it back around, another pocket on the front here with just a little holding tab. And again, another pocket where we can put like a document or whatever, this is actually kind of a large area here. And the only thing we have left to really do is unzip this and check out the actual drone. So this opens up really wide, I like that. So you can fold this all the way down if you wanted to. It's got that same nice kind of suede uh, coating inside, really gives it a very premium feel. And here we go, so wow, very well protected drone here. Holy smokes. I haven't touched a larger drone like this in a while from DJI. So this is it guys, look at this. Mavic 3 and they've gone a whole different direction with their camera and sensor protection gimbal cover. You can see how it's just like this rubberized plastic on the front. And then they strapped it all the way around the back of the drone, which also has um, covers for all the sensors on the bottom as well. And it also locks the propellers in there. Look at this. So an all inclusive kind of cover protector that holds everything together. So it's about time they did something like that instead of having to buy these things extra. We're gonna break into this in depth once I take the other stuff out of this uh, bag and we, so we can see everything. Set that on the side for now. Box right on the top. As you can see, it's kind of a multi-tiered, really well done inside the bag as well. See how we have that really nice pocket for the drone that soft suede material so you know you're not gonna damage your drone with padding here we have a little flip up multi-level that's too bad a little bit of stained dirt on there <laughs> from the factory so too bad that happened but no big deal we have a zipper pocket with a mesh bag silicon bags in there for um, keeping things dry so that's a pocket there flip this up and then we have all this stuff underneath. These are gonna be all our batteries and our charging peripherals. So there should be one battery in it over there. Here's another one. And again, we're gonna inspect these really in depth once we take all this stuff out. So two batteries, really well done. Individual pockets that fit perfectly for the batteries in there. This looks like the actual uh, wall plug. So we've got the wall plug here with a micro, or actually a USB-C high power connector on the end there. Little foam insert. So I'm just gonna keep that in there for now. It looks like it's just kind of stabilizing the controller. And this looks like the same controller that's coming with the Air 2S and the Mavic uh, 2 Mini. That's what the empty bag looks like. Really, really well done. Uh, this thing looks like it's going to last forever, man. Let's go ahead and move on to the good stuff. Bear with me, guys. We still got a lot of stuff to do. So I got the drone, the controller, part of the charger, two batteries right here. And I wanted to check out what's in this box. This is going to probably be where all the propellers are and all the little stuff. Manuals right on top. So I like to just go through these things in depth so you guys really know what you're getting when you're dropping this amount of money on pretty fantastic products. These guys have great quality products. Anyway, quick start guide, uh, safety and guidelines, accessories, user guide. So we'll definitely wanna check those out. Tucked away in the back here, it looks like these are the ND filters. Cool, put that on the side. We have a plug right here. So this is another quite long actual USB-C to USB-A type connector there. That's going to probably be going with the charger and stuff. This other thing on top looks like the multi-charger. Just going to set this down for a second. And then we have our connection cables from the controller to your phone or tablet. One is USB-C to USB-C, and this is a USB-C to the old uh, micro USB type of connector. The lightning cable 
it's usually on the controller already for your you know iPhones and stuff and your iPads so I'm gonna grab all these things these look like they're all propellers and extra thumbsticks looks like that's it not seeing anything else in that box that's like all the small peripheral box and let's see what all this stuff is really close up and in depth okay guys first off extra propellers one two three four so that's one whole set one two three four two whole sets extra plus it already has a whole set on the drone there so a total of three sets of propellers with this fly more combo bag that is great you never know when you're gonna hit a tree this shouldn't hit a tree because it has all those obstacle avoiding sensors which we're going to be testing out in the flight test extra little set of thumbsticks great to have these around because sometimes they fall out in the grass when you're trudging through tall grass or in the forest who knows where and then of course we've already looked at this but i just want to unravel it here so there's our cord there and here is looks like our power brick take all this stuff off and you can see how this just opens up and that is our wall plug this one here this is the pretty long cable here and you know I'm glad they're including these sometimes they don't include these high quality cables it looks like they're actually doing it for this one since it's such a high price uh, USB a to USB C very thick cable for high current charging that is very thick not your normal USB cable there. So we're gonna see uh, what that's for. And this is also a great thing that you get with the Fly More combo. So here's the multi-charger. If you do want to charge all three batteries at the same time, uh, it's got little rubber stops on the bottom. Great, keeps it secure on the table and stuff. Not gonna slide around. And this is what your batteries are gonna go into. And it just got one USB-C high voltage or high amperage plug there and as you can see we can take our power brick and we can plug directly into that and into the wall to charge your three batteries I believe they're gonna charge one at a time like they usually do with DJI products where the one that has the most charge is gonna charge first so you can get up and flying and then it switches to the second that has the most charge and the third so it looks like this cable is going to be charging the controller oh there it is okay on the back of the power brick there is a USB type a plug and so fantastic we can charge all three batteries they're gonna charge in sequence of course but we can also charge our controller at the same time they finally are including this cable a lot of times they don't with the cheaper DJI products but they're doing it here so that's how the power adapter works last thing in that small box is going to be the ND filters so let's take these and open them up if you do want to get better photography and video which you probably are if you're buying this drone. Um, I think it's great that they're now providing the ND filters. And the cool thing about this drone, guys, is it's got one camera for zooming in and one camera for the high quality photo and video. We've got ND4, ND8, ND16, and ND32. Not very sunny to extremely sunny type of day and there's also some other types of reasons you'd want to use nd filters in certain situations to give you better video and pictures let's check out these batteries see how they connect to the multi-charger so two extra batteries here and then we're going to check out the controller and then the drone so we're saving the best for last so bear with me this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer video, but it's going to be very in-depth for you guys. You can see the mechanism working here, a little bit different. It's just like a presser spring type of deal. And uh, the front of the battery there, that's where it's going to connect to the pins to connect it to the power port of the quadcopter. First thing I'm noticing is lithium ion, not lipo. So interesting. These wow yeah they feel like round cells in there like the way my finger is right here stacked in so it looks like they're getting into the lithium ion uh high quality kind of manufacturing for these types of batteries because they've got to be really good batteries this thing's supposed to fly for about 40 minutes which we're also going to be testing 
5,000 mAh. Its nominal voltage is 15.4 and its maximum voltage is 17.6. So that is our batteries and we got three of them in this flamework combo okay guys getting into the controller bear with me i know this is going to be a long one but really want to just go in depth again as i was saying i do have the uh two batteries on the charger plugged into the wall and i am timing these it's been about two minutes so far so when that first one uh finishes and we're ready to boot up this drone in just a second here i'll tell you how long one of the batteries took so you can calculate three times that much if you put all three batteries in at the same time so here it is yeah it does it looks like the same controller that comes with the mavic mini 2 and also the um air 2s i'm not seeing really seeing any difference you can see how this pulls out from the top and this is not going to hold anything other than a um, larger phone, like the biggest size iPhone or like a phablet, you would call it, like a phone tablet. If you wanted to put in the iPad mini or a larger iPad, you're going to have to get an extra peripheral. And I got this for the Air 2S and the mini. And what this is, is you see how it's just like a clamp. You just put this in here, twist lock it. And so this way, it can hold devices like the iPad mini. There we go. See how that clamps in there nice and easy. You can actually also buy a specific clamp from DJI, which I actually did just for this uh, review. And I got it right here. And as you can see, it just clips around the whole controller. Now this would be something I would use if I had a larger iPad like the actual, I have, I have an iPad Air 2. So you can really clamp it, brings it up a little bit higher away from the controls. And uh, it's a little more stabilized in the center of the controller. So I'll go ahead and have the links of course for all this stuff down in the description guys. And also the video series down there. Don't forget to check it down there. And also up here, I'll have it pop up when those other videos are complete, you can check out the flight test, range test, cinematic tests, and all that stuff. Probably can do some lift tests as well. Anyway, getting back to the controller, let's rotate it here. So the antennas are gonna be up here. So you wanna face these towards the craft when you're flying. Really same controller that we're familiar with with the other drones. Picture video button here, our uh, roller for our gimbal up and down here. This does not click in at all. Uh, we have our phone or tablet cable. One of them has a graphic, so that's gonna stay in the controller. And then this is the side you're gonna pull out and plug into your uh, phone or tablet. As usual, we've got the sticks in there with some rubber kind of bumpers to help them stay in here. This is all like rubberized around the sticks. Really nicely wedge in there. No real way you can put those on wrong. And you're just screwing on the sticks here. Nice aluminum with a rubber collar around there so you can control it. Whether you're a pincher, you can feel that rubber, or you're a thumber like I am, you just have these little grip sticks on top. We got our function button. We have our camera to video switching button, normal, sport, and cine mode. We have our power. As you can see, it's just about half charged. Same type of deal, press for indicator on your power and then press, press and hold to power up the controller. We have a pause feature. So if you're doing some kind of those automated features, you can hit pause. Uh, or if you're, you want to return to home, you just hold this thing in to return to home. USB-C port there, which we can throw on the charger and charge this up with the batteries that are charging over there. I'm going to do that in just a second once we're done checking this out. Same like the other ones, it's got nice grippy rubber here. Now the fit and finish and quality, I should say guys on DJI is, it's kind of a cut above the rest. I mean, DJI does have its problems, especially with geo restricted flight zones and all that stuff for like older airports that are out of commission. But I gotta say man, the fit and finish of their products are just top notch and they're getting better and better. 
Looks like a heat sink in there and I can see the screen is open for cooling. Looks like they actually maybe made this a little bit longer than the Mini and stuff, the other drones, so that you had an easier time because with the other one, with the Mini, I remember I had to slide the iPad over like this in order for this cable to reach. So it looks like they lengthened that a little bit. Okay guys, last but not least, the best part of this whole thing is the Mavic 3. So man, just really excited to review this with you and really put it through its paces. And again, remember, this is not a cheap drone. This is like, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for probably one of the best and cost-effective drones, get the DJI Mini 2. I'd recommend getting that one. I know Autel is coming out with a mini, uh, like a Nano, so I'm gonna be reviewing that soon. And also I have the mini uh, Hubson, so I'm also reviewing that. Really do like the DJI line, except for all that geo lockout stuff, which a lot of people complain about. So anyway, um, getting into the Mavic 3, check it out. So I'm just gonna kinda look at it here before we take it out of all of its uh, this whole armor, I should say, it's kind of like armor. Um, a little bit different, I'm noticing right off the back, black painted motors, kind of cool. A little bit of difference. The color looks maybe a little darker. Um, definitely darker than the Air and the Mini series. Maybe even a little darker than the Mavic 2 series, just a tad. But really, everything just tucked away nicely, really guarded great. I'm seeing right here a couple sensors on the top. This thing has 360 degree obstacle avoidance, guys. So you are getting what you're paying for. Extremely hard plastic with this outer rubber coating, just like this fused rubber coating. So it makes it feel a little softer on the outside. But man, it is, you can see that the, you can see the transition there between the hard rubber coating on top of that plastic and that really hard plastic underneath. It's just kind of a floating little clip too. Didn't really take anything, just put it over and it just kind of sits down by itself, ready to go. Pop that up and it just comes right off. That's where the propellers are gonna lock in. The bottom comes off and it's unlocking the propellers as well as unprotecting these that little sensor cluster. And then look at this, we can just pull the whole thing off. Let's see how this is. Just pull this off. Great. And just before we look at the drone, this is interesting in itself. It's, it's look at this, it's like a leather, leather or faux leather glued onto the front cover, which is infused to these this back top clip, so. See how it's like a two-part thing there? We have the Mavic 3 muzzle right here. Hey, who would have known? They, they make a muzzle for drones now. But anyway, uh, great for protection. And let's finally look at the Mavic 3. Here it is. Looking a little bit different, the same but different. Look at this, they, ain't, they put the uh, front sensors, the camera sensors at an angle. So they're like at a 45 degree angle instead of pointing straight out. And that is actually pretty smart. As long as the software knows what to do, it's giving you a wider vision of view instead of having to have front, sides, backs, tops, and bottoms. It looks like the fronts and the backs actually, look at this when I pull out one of the arms here, and the backs are actually also at a 45 degree angle. They're using the sensors on the four corners for front, sides, and the rear. We're just looking at it while it's folded up. Heat sinks on top. There's the two top sensors there. Those look like they're the kind of cheaper, lower quality sensors than those, those front ones and the back ones. And then we have actually one of those high quality, two of those high quality sensors, cameras on the bottom as well. LED lights. And this is gonna be the LiDAR sensor. So this is kind of for really just shooting a laser at the ground and telling the ground height when you're within a certain height. I don't think it's gonna do it from way high up in the air, but uh, you know, probably 50 feet or lower. Those are gonna look at the ground for elevation. And these are the ones that are actually gonna be 
seeing the ground for obstacles. Pretty cool, man. Just want to kind of absorb this. Look at that heat sink on the bottom. Looks very similar to other ones. And look at this camera on the front. This thing is ginormous. Look at this. I believe the top is the camera that can zoom way the heck in. And the one on the bottom is our large sensor camera that can take high quality photos and video, okay? It does have heat sink cooling fins, so you can tell that this thing is gonna get pretty hot. It's gonna need the air rushing over it, cooling it all while it's in the air, so you probably don't wanna let it sit for too long, but this will have a fan in it. So I think it's time to open this thing up. Can't really see much more until it's opened up, so let's do it. So we do the front first, from the back to the front. And then the back ones, okay, the same thing. We're going down and out. See how these go down and rotate out. So that's it in all of its glory unfolded. And now we can look at the sides and really see what this thing's all about. So again, a little bit of abrasion tape. I'm gonna wanna take this stuff off, off guys all over it. Also some abrasion tape right here on the back. So really important to take this stuff off. You don't want this flapping around in the air and giving you drag, you know, while you're trying to fly far or else it'll cut down on your flight time. So four little ones on the front left and right sides and back left and right sides. Looks like the only other tape we have on here is in the gimbal camera. So let's take this one off and one more on this side right here. Looking at it from a front view, we have our tilt left and right. See that? So that's as far as it rotates. Remember, this is a three axis gimbal. And then we're gonna, and this is all stabilized, right? And then we're gonna have our pitching down. So as usual, it kind of goes down past the utmost bottom point. And then pitching up, this can go all the way up past the top point. That's a pretty, high rotation camera there. And then we have our uh, our yaw limit. So might as well, while we're here, let's do that uh, filter replacement. So you wanna hold the camera steady like this. And just a easy little turn. You see how that notches out? Definitely don't wanna be touching the lenses or anything. And then we're gonna grab our ND filter of choice. I'll just put on the ND4 the lowest one here and we want the H just like it is coming off on the top left kind of putting it in at that little cock to the left angle pushing it and turning it and it just really easily snaps in that was really very simple that's all you got to do for taking off and putting on ND filters probably going to do the original flight test with all the tracking with the original lens cover only because if there was inter interference I don't want to I don't want that to happen when I'm doing the tracking you know what I mean because I want to kind of do it all in that uh, first flight test but there you go that's the original back on really very simple and an excellent case to uh, take care of all of your ND filters. All right, continuing on, the arms seem like they are smaller than any arms I have seen before. Look at this, thinner than the Mavic 2 line, very much thinner. On each corner of the arm at the end, we have a smoked LED light for the front and the back. Landing gear on the back of this one is going to be touching the ground. So it is a little bit of a softer coating than the arm. A little bit rubberized there. And on the front, very similar type of deal. It is our landing foot with a little bit of a more rubberized uh, thing on the bottom here. And then check out the motors. So motors, like I was saying, are a different color. They're now black, kind of like that sleek black look. Uh, the bottom does have extra cooling heat sinks on the bottom. I'd imagine they've come a pretty long ways since the Mavic 2 line on the efficiency and stuff of these motors. And then of course the propellers, let's go ahead and just try to take one of these off, pushing down. This looks like a kind of a reverse propeller, so I'm twisting it 
clockwise to pop it up. These propellers are a little bit different looking. They don't really have that uh, wing tip like the old ones did. They have more of a cutoff here and actually have rubber. Look at that, so it's an actual rubber tip. So I guess they're going for a little bit more safety on this one. Hopefully that doesn't really cut down the flight time, but they must have been getting reports of the propellers nicking and cutting people. So <laughs> you know how that goes. Uh, whenever there's enough reports of that kind of stuff, they have to make a safety change and it looks like they did that with the new propellers. Anyway, putting this thing on the same way we took it off, just putting it over the motor shaft and then pushing down, rotating until it pops back up and locks in there, give it a tug. And we know that's never gonna fly off. Okay guys, one final inspection, a couple more things to look at, and then we're gonna boot it up and see how it looks on the controller. A nice heat sink right here on top, sucking that air in for cooling. In the back of the camera, there is an open area you can see there with, it looks like almost a grill or heat sinks there as well. Sides, we I can see through these grills. So lots of cooling going on here. Bottom as well, little intake slots for when it's cruising forward. Looks like those are gonna bring in some air. And then coming around to the back, kind of a exhaust port here on the back with another heat sink. You see that heat sink there, and then if we look in front of it, there it is. So in the front of that heat sink, there is a screen which is either sucking in air or pushing air out. So multi cooling ports here, multi heat sinks. Let's look a little more in depth at the back here. It looks like this is our port. Can we take this off with the battery in? Yes, we can. So just a fingernail pops this thing up. And it is, guys, a USB-C port and a micro SD card port. So put a high quality micro SD card in there. I like to use the Xandisk Extreme Pro cards. So you're not limiting your video in any way and they're the highest quality, longest lasting durable cards I've ever used. I'll have those down in the description as well. Popping the battery out, wow, it's actually spring loaded. So you push these in and it already wants to shoot out. See that? It shoots out a little bit on its own. Looking into the battery compartment, so air is gonna be flowing all the way through there from through the front of the gimbal to the back around the battery for cooling, so that's excellent. And this thing just got really light, man. This battery weighs quite a bit. Remember, it's a lithium ion, those cylindrical cells weighing a lot. Push this thing back in. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to have this rubber thing pushed up that's guarding the video card because it looks like if that thing's loose, it's not gonna really go in properly. So you just wanna hear that satisfying click and you're ready to go. Okay guys, well, phase one complete. That was a really in-depth look at everything you get in the Flymore combo. Got you really up close and personal with all the components on the drone. And now let's charge the batteries, power this thing up and see how it looks on the screen, see if it needs any updates. Okay guys, we're back, got this battery charged up. Now that literally took, as you can see on my watch, an hour and 15 minutes to um, charge this battery up on the multi-charger. So one hour each from 50%, how they ship them to you. And then this guy here is also fully charged and that took about an hour to fully charge when I had them all charging at the same time. Let's go ahead and connect this thing, get it started up and see what it's all about. Turn on our controller first. So we'll press, press and hold. That comes up, that's looking for the craft. We'll do a press, press and hold. And I wanna flip this guy around real quick while it's starting up. Hey, it's a new tone for the Mavic 3. Did you hear that? More of a um, digital quick tone there. And that's it. The gimbal is basically, camera's coming up. It's just kind of leveling itself. And it seems like it is ready to go. So that's all it is. Just make sure you have a level surface and boot that thing up. I know I didn't move it real quick before it actually initiated, but I wanted to show you the camera. So you normally wouldn't do that. But once these lights are on solid, you know that it's connected to the craft. Next up, guys, is to make sure you have the DJI Fly app on your device. So I downloaded this from the App Store. You can also get it from the Android 
app store or from uh, DJI website themselves. So if you're having trouble finding it in the app store, go to their website and download it from DJI.com. Plug in the plug here, plug in there. I'm hearing a tone on my iPad and there we go. It immediately, it looked like it did detect it. So that's good news. Activate DJI device, of course, read through all this stuff and agree if you agree with it. Successfully activated. And this is where it's gonna ask you if you want that DJI care refresh. So if you crash your drone, lose your drone, you get a basically two replacements. Um, free two-way shipping. They basically send you a shipping label. Water damage is covered and flyaway is covered. Covered. Anyway, I'm going to skip this for now because I really don't do it. Directed to the official site. See? So this is, I always have this problem. I skipped it because I don't want it. But now it wants to give me, it wants to take me to the DJI site. I want to cancel that. Skip, cancel, um, no. I don't want this guys, what's up? So this always happens. If I press more, it takes me to the DJI store. Um, so there's really, <laughs> it's it's like they're, they're corralling you into this. Now you do have 48 hours from when you first start up the drone to activate this, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, you can see there's no X, there's no back arrow on my iPad here. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta like, just get out of the app and then apparently relaunch the app and then that kind of got us out of that um, DJI carry fresh loop. So awesome, wow, this camera looks really clear. Look at that latency, it's so minimal. It looks like it's in 60 frames per second mode as well. Hearing the fan come on the drone right now, so that fan is kicking on to keep everything cool. Man, their OcuSync technology, the OcuSync technology is what's going from the controller to the drone for control and video and just look at that it's just so darn clear anyway i'm going to just really quickly show you how this button works right here the roller so if i pull the roller to the left watch what happens to the camera so as usual all these drones do this that's to roll your camera up and down you can go fully down or i'm pushing it to the right now you can go up, wow, when you're moving your gimbal, you can actually see on the controller the degree of vertical or horizontal. So it is going 35 degrees above horizontal, guys. You see as I scroll down, that would be horizontal right about there, okay? And so you can, you do have the ability to go up quite a bit and that's great so you can get kind of upward shots that's pretty cool i'm liking that let me just go ahead and show you how this gimbal performs and just look at that so you can see the video that it's going to be taking and i'm seeing on the screen of the ipad that video is crystal clear guys and it looks like it's 60 frames per second it's just really fluid it's just leaps and bounds better than the last uh, Mavic 2 or Mavic 1. So you can see how that gimbal is really stabilizing the video, even though I'm moving the drone around like this. And that's what's so good about having, you know, a, uh, a th three axis gimbal for stabilization. Over on the left top side, I have end mode means normal, and that's just corresponding to the switch. So they're just these tiny little icons up here. It's also saying 14 satellites, really hard to see, but hopefully you can see those. Coming over to the bottom right, it tells us how much storage we have. So 959 photos, since it's in photo mode, JPEG format, EV values, and the auto or manual type of camera modes. What I noticed, you see how the Stormtrooper is kind of out of focus there? Watch this, this one enables you to click anywhere on the screen and it immediately focuses in. That's a little bit close, so it can't really focus in on that. Let's just try maybe the plant over there. Yeah, so that really focused that in nice and nice and tight. So you have that ability, let's try the power armor. Yeah, so you have that ability to focus on 
different objects on the screen. That's what's so good about these hot, more high-end Mavics. Over here, we have a distance from our launch point. It's saying three feet. That's probably a little off because I'm in the house. And you have your mile per hour and your height in footage. And then if we click on this guy over here, that's gonna be our map. So I'm clicking on it. And it just, you can have the map pop up just like that. Let's see if we press on the north arrow. You see how it changes as I move around. It's kind of, the whole map is kind of tilting. Or if I click on that, that locks the north. Press on this bottom left icon and that kind of minimizes the map again. If I press minus or plus, wow, okay, so you can zoom in on your location even in this little mini map. And then there's an A on the bottom right, let me press that. Cool, so that brings us back down into our compass. This way you can see where you are, that little blue dot, and you can see how it corresponds to the drone in the middle, and also which way the drone is facing. So you have all that like real-time information when you're flying to know if the drone is directly in front of you, which way you're facing, which way the drone drone's facing, all that stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna click on that little like GPS icon there and that brings us back to our minimize map. If you wanna maximize the map, just press on it and boom. So that maximizes our map when you press on that mini map and it makes our video in the small icon window down below. And this is where we can do all kinds of stuff like change our imagery. We can do satellite only. And this is gonna bring in as long as you have a, a internet connection, right? So whether your tablet has an internet connection or your phone is gonna determine if it can stream in this in real time. Imagery, I want mixed. So mixed shows you the labels, right? As well as the imagery. So pretty cool there. You can zoom in and out on it as you want. And it'll actually should follow the drone as you're flying. So you can see here I am in Hawaii. There's areas for the Lahaina uh, Airport, Kahului Airport, and then there is the Hana Airport over there. That's the thing with DJI. I mean, I've heard people complain. I don't really have the problem because I usually just fly in this area up here, away from any of that yellow stuff. So I've heard of people co complaining that there might be a decommissioned airport and they still have these old no-fly zones and they can't even fly DJI products. So that would be my main concern if you were to buy this, is you might have trouble flying in your area. Anyway, you can hit I over here and that shows you what these all mean, kind of the legend for different cover, for different colors. Approved zones all the way up to restricted zones. Right now, you can see the north is locked on the map when I rotate it. If you take that lock off, you can see that it's basically going ahead and actually um, the iPad is telling it which way you're facing. Like if you were to use the Apple Maps or Google Maps, that's kind of how that looks. So this is using that airplane sensor, right? So what this does is your craft, the newer drones, they can sense aircraft. So if the aircraft is close or coming in, it'll give you a warning on the screen and you need to bring your craft down. So you can either turn that on or off if you want. And then the cool feature that I really like and that DJI does really well is the find my drone feature. So you run out of battery or your drone crashes for some reason, you just click here and it immediately goes into this map, the searching map, which you can also change, you know, the different kind of satellite view. You can go mixed or regular satellite and then you can turn it off and on the uh, the north lock. You can start flashing and beeping. So if I press this, say you're getting close to it, you press it, you hear that? So that's really loud. That's louder than all the other ones I've heard. So that's a great feature. If you're getting close, it's in the bushes, you can't find it. Press that, it'll start beeping. Um, if you do want to go ahead and start a route to where your, your drone has crashed or landed, you can press use other maps. Basically, I just clicked and now it's going into Apple Maps and I can go ahead and uh, do a route to the drone if I wanted to. It'll tell you 
driving instructions and everything. It really improved the Find My Drone. I've used that a couple times. If you guys want to check out a couple of my other videos with DJI products, um, just looking for the drone makes it really easy. Anyway, that's really all there is to see on the map there. You can also see, you know, your on-flight telemetry while you're in the map mode. It's going to tell you how high, how far you are, and, you know, all of your speeds and your flight time and everything while you're in the map mode, which is really cool. Clicking back on the video screen, and there we are, back in the real-time FPV preview. So guys, it looks like a lot of the same basic stuff on the main menu screen, except for, let's go over here, face the plant over there, all the way across the house, except for these binoculars. You see them here? So I'm gonna click on those guys, and it's saying, zoom up to 28 times explore mode so this is what you can do if you're flying way out there remember i was talking about two cameras on the front two separate cameras you can fly way the heck out there and there's two ways you can zoom in the first way you can zoom in and we're going to explore this more while we're flying is just by pinching the screen and look at that we can zoom in with amazing clarity that's fantastic oh my gosh I thought that was it but it just keeps going holy smokes so I'm not sure how much optical and digital this is it might just be all digital but look at that so that's literally about 20 feet across the house so we can do it that way and the clarity is just phenomenal leaps and bounds better than anything they've had in the Mavic series it seems like when it hits about, let's see, what is that? When it hits about four times zoom, it seems like it starts to go into digital. You see how it skips there? And now it looks like it might be going into digital up to 28 times. You can see that little hiccup when I'm zooming out. Watch this. Pulling out, pulling out, kind of stops. And then it goes beep. And that looks like that might be where the optical takes over. Another way we can zoom in hold the function key, okay, and use the roller at the same time. So I'm going to hold the left function key in, and now I'm holding it in and using the roller to the right, okay? So gradually, that's about as slow as you can go. You saw how it kind of skipped there into digital mode, it seems. So I'm just rolling that right roller and then now I'm rolling it to the left on that top left roller while I'm holding in that function key. So there we go, a phenomenal, really nice um, digital zoom using that top camera there. They have that type of deal in some of their higher end drones that cost way more money, but it's good to see them having that capability in kind of the prosumer model style drones now that aren't up in like the, you know, five to ten thousand realm or more they're actually down below five thousand dollars now where we can have this capability okay guys so a few other things we want to look at uh, let's just kind of go in you can see that that's camera mode we can press this button here to get us into video mode you can see how the screen changes a bit now we're in video mode uh, we should be able let me just see we should be able to zoom in the same amount in video mode yeah so same thing, way the heck in there at 28 times zoom. Just a little unfortunate, like right at four times it like skips. So maybe they can work on that in software to smooth that out. Either can switch with this button there or you can just press, you know, the icon here to switch between photo and video mode. This has master shots. So it looks like features coming soon. Wow, there's the quick shots. Feature coming soon, really? Boy, I just bought this like anybody else. That's interesting how they're still not really doing that. Let me see if there's an update, guys. So I just went into the menu. Did you see those three little dots up at the top right? That brings into you into the overall menu where you can do stuff like how you want your obstacle avoidance to act, if you want it just to stop, bypass, or turn that whole 
obstacle avoidance off. Adjust all your altitudes and your distances, what height you want it to return home if it loses signal or your controller turns off or something. Same stuff as usual you would see in the DJI Fly app with even other drones. Compass and IMU are normal. Definitely would advise to do the IMU at home on a level you know, floor. It's perfectly level floor that's not vibrating like concrete or something. Go ahead and do the IMU and also do the compass when you're out in the field where you're going to fly away from metal and stuff like that. So lots of information at our fingertips as usual with DJI. You got your auxiliary LED and if you notice here, I can actually turn them on through the software on the iPad. And that's turning on those bottom lights there. And they will turn on automatically if when it's landing or if it gets really low light. And you can change your unit. So you guys that are in Europe or a lot of other places in the world, probably the main comment I get in my videos is complaining about units. But at least you can use metric or imperial. I'm in the US, so I like to see my feet, miles, all that stuff, miles per hour. Gimbal calibration, if it's a little off, you can do that. Advanced gimbal settings, you know, you can change the mode of your controls. So how you want your controls to be, you have three different preset modes, or you can fully customize how your throttle is, how you're turning and all that stuff is. So if you are a different, if you control in different ways, at least you have that possibility. You can turn off or on your phone charging. So if you want your device to charge from the battery in the controller, if say your phone is about to die or it's low power and you wanna take some power out of this controller, at least you have that option. And then we can actually change the function of this uh, function button. So you have, if you just tap it, you can set it to do all these different things. If you double tap that, say the gimbal's down. I'm just moving the gimbal down. You see how the video's like that. Brings it back to center. So a good way to just bring it right back. We have advanced settings here. Now this is really interesting that you won't find on a lot of smart drones where you can actually change all of your expo settings, really customize them down to how you like. So if we go to the camera, this is a whole nother menu with all the camera settings. So depending on how you like to tweak your camera, the storage location. So right now it's internal storage. It's got eight gigabytes of internal storage. Now, if you get that advanced model of the Mavic 3, you get that one terabyte of storage, I believe, on board. Um, I didn't really see the use for that because I'll just pop an SD card in. As you can see, I don't have an SD card in there yet. Also reset camera settings if it gets all out of whack. Moving on up top over to transmission. I usually leave it to dual band. Even though I do my range tests, it's pretty good at now um, intelligently switching between 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz depending on the inter interference that's in the area between either you and the craft. So you can see how this is fluctuating in my house. We have a graph of interference. If you wanted to, you can go into manual and you can adjust set all this manual if you wanted that possibility. Anyway, it brought me to the main screen again and there is an update up here. So let's just do it. Installing failed. Interesting. Let's retry that. Okay, now it's downloading. So good to know, you know, if you have a failure, just retry. I'm gonna press more here. So this is the stuff that it's actually downloading into the uh, iPad and then it's gonna transfer it over to the Mavic 3. So it looks like this is gonna take a while, guys. I'm gonna tune out here for a minute. It looks like it's taking, I don't know, 10 seconds per percent right now. So I'll tune out and hop back in when it's almost done. Okay, just popping back in actually midway and drone is restarting itself. Heard that little chime that's at 60%. And it's gonna do this several times. If you've ever watched my unboxings, oh, a double boot up. Okay, double reset right there. If you've ever watched my unboxings with other DJI drones, I should just explain this right now. You really want to that first battery that you put in there after you charge it up and your controller and your device here, your smart device. Designate that first battery to doing this, okay? Do these updates um, 
have your other batteries charging because you want to make sure you have a full battery uh, to do these updates. If your battery isn't fully charged and you try these, sometimes they take so long uh, that it could mess you up. You can see that gimbal now is doing something there. Just wanted to make sure that the iPad wasn't touching it. But I do want you guys to kind of see the lights on the controller as well. Okay. Drone just shut off. Controller lights blinking. This is the third boot up in a very short amount of time. So again, let it do all this stuff when it's updating and don't shake the table. Don't be grabbing it, moving it around. Just have it set down like this, nice and still, um, connected to your Wi-Fi, you know, preferably with a full charge, everything. And just let this thing go. It looks like the controller is now updating. It's blinking with two lights in the middle. And we're just going to wait and see what happens here. And it may have multiple updates. This is just one of them. This looks like the main firmware on the Mavic 3. There are other updates. Here, this looks like this is the one for the controller. And there are also other like safe flight database updates and little things that it may want to do after this main update. So we are going to make sure we do all that stuff. Controller is blinking a little different now. It's probably installing the firmware in the controller. Back lights on the drone. You see them blinking rapidly on the very back there. And the controller just reset itself. That was the controller sound. We're at 95% here on the screen. Rounding the last corner, hopefully. And there we go. Check mark. Firmware installed, another beep from the controller. Just heard a tone from my iPad. Solid lights connected here. Drone is now blinking like it's ready to go. Okay, so I should be able to just X out of here on the top left. And that's what I was talking about. There is a fly safe required update. So I'm going to go ahead and update that as well. Downloading and let's go to more. So these, these ones are usually pretty quick. The fly safe database, you see how fast that was update successful. And I mean, that's unfortunately going to be that database that tells you where you can and cannot fly. Um, which gosh, everything's being cracked down on so hard now ridiculously for just hobbyist pilots unfortunately doesn't look like it has any more updates it looks like it updated the firmware on the craft and the controller anyway guys i think that's really it man that was really fun this guy looks pretty wild right it's looking quite a bit different uh than the other mavics kind of similar on the top but look at that whole back module there is way different this is going to be kind of the wrap up just things that are shocking, you know, the motors are a different color, the whole back is different. They're going with a high capacity lithium ion cylindrical round cell, round cell batteries now for their battery pack. This thing can supposedly fly for 40 minutes. We're gonna be doing those tests coming up here in just a second now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check the series that'll pop up here for this drone, and also the links are going to be down in the description for that series as well. And where you can get the Mavic 3, whether it be the Fly More or the more professional model, up to you. You're going to just spend more money, but I got this one because I think this is all I'm going to need. I really have to recommend if you have a few hundred extra dollars, go ahead and get this Fly More package. The bag is the most durable and universal bag I've ever seen them make yet since it has that backpack ability three batteries you get the two extra sets of propellers the multi-charger all that stuff in the package um, it really is worth it if you just buy the whole package together of course if you're short on the cash you can always buy the regular version but this one really is worth the money with all that extra stuff in the fly more combo really anxious to see how these uh, 45 degree camera optical avoidance sensors are working now 
and also the top and bottom sensors. We're gonna do some fully automated tracking tests in the trees and stuff like I normally like to do. Track my son on a skateboard and see how that works as well. And then don't forget, we're gonna be doing the range test coming up here as well. So the flight test is up next. Remember, I have three of these batteries, so just to warn you, that's probably gonna be a very long video. It's probably gonna be over an hour. I know this one was already long, but thanks for hanging in there with me. Stuff that you should know if you're new to the drone scene or just new to the Mavic 3, or you just wanna see what this thing's all about in depth. Also gonna do some more cinematic flying, probably a lift test on this thing too, like I do with the other DJI products just to see how much this thing can carry if you wanna take it for fishing or something like that. Overall, so far, it looks fantastic. I'm really blown away. Just a couple of things to note. Really blown away at that uh, FPV. I know I talked about that when we were looking at it, but just look how fluid that is. It has a very minimal delay, which is phenomenal. And it just, it looks like it's 60 frames per second live view which is great and it's just so incredibly clear. So you're getting all these Mavic Pro type features in the Mavic 3 and then some. So we have a new OcuSync, we have farther range, we have a longer flight time, that 40 minutes I talked to you about. I'm estimating it's probably gonna be around 35. They're usually about five minutes short on what they say they can fly for. When they're coming up with those numbers, they're just testing it in a lab. So it's not like real world situations. So you'll see all that tested in the next few videos. Lots more to come on this drone and other drones. So go ahead and give me a subscribe and a like if you like this video and what I do on all my other videos as well. Got some cool giveaways coming up for Christmas this year. So hang in there for my subscribers and I will see you in the flight test of the Mavic 3. See you there. Thanks for watching.